what's up guys welcome back to another exciting episode of fix a friday this week we are going to be doing a fix that doesn't require tools how do you ask uh, more so what are we doing uh, we are going to be working on my psp uh, yes i know it's lavender this is actually the hannah montana special edition don't judge me all right so the problem we're having is uh, as you can see there are no networks that we can connect to uh, including my actual wi-fi um, and one of the reasons for that is the uh, PSP uses older networking standards than the newer systems do. Um, basically, the maximum encryption it can do is uh, WPA uh, or WEP, and uh, all of the newer routers only support WPA2. So the issue with that is the encryption standards newer than the PSP. Uh, I asked Sony about this, and they said that they had no intentions of releasing new firmware to the PSP, so you either had to use an old router or it's not going to connect to the internet. There are a few online games still for the PSP. Uh, the main reason I wanted to do it was just to update the date, because I'm lazy. But I couldn't do it, so I figured, hey, I can't be the only one that has this problem. So uh, I'm going to show you guys how to do that today. Um, basically, all you need is your PSP, uh, any kind of computer, uh, and an old router that's not your main router. Uh, I know most people are going to have uh, a router that they've replaced recently. Uh, anything from, um, basically anything that supports wireless G or N should be fine. Um, as long as it supports WEP encryption, we'll be fine. Um, I know WEP is not the most secure encryption, but I'm going to show you a way around that as well. Basically, we're going to turn on MAC address filtering, uh, and I'll show you what that means and how that works and all that good stuff in this next little bit. All right, so I'm um, sorry for the crappy picture. I'm having to record this uh, with my camera pointing at my laptop. Uh, this is just one of my little netbooks, so uh, nothing fancy here. Uh, we are running Chrome OS, but that's irrelevant. Uh, because everything we're doing is going to be browser-based uh, for the most part. Um, the steps will be slightly different on Windows, but uh, the basic concepts are the same. So as long as you understand basic operation of Windows, you should be fine. Uh, the other thing you're going to need is an old router. I'm using this old D-Link uh, that I replaced two routers ago. Um, basically, this one just has trouble staying on, um, so it can only stay on for maybe a day or two, and you have to reset it. Uh, and since I'm only going to be using this intermittently for the PSP, it seemed like a good choice for it. So basically, you're going to start out by disconnecting from any Wi-Fi that you're on, unplugging any existing network connections, uh, so that you're only going to be connected to this. So we're going to disable my Wi-Fi, and it's going to yell at me, because Chromebooks do not like having not having internet. Uh, then we're going to plug the Ethernet cable from the router into here. Uh, also, I should mention, you're going to want to be in one of the numbered network ports, not the Ethernet port, when you're going to the laptop. Um, so once you've got that done, you can plug it in, plug in your power, it'll boot up uh, in just a few minutes. Alright, so we are up and running now. Uh, basically, you just want to go to your Ethernet settings, uh, and you're actually going to want to look at the settings for this. So I'm connected to Ethernet. At uh, this address 192.168.0.199 uh, you're going to want to remember this first part 192.168.0 and this gateway 192.168.0.1 this is actually the address that we need so copy that and what we're going to do is paste that into the browser under your address tab and that will connect you to your router um, with this one I've disabled the admin password just so it's easier to get in uh, but you'll have some kind of splash screen here. Uh, if you don't know what the username and password are for your router, uh, if you haven't changed it, you can just go to the manufacturer's website or just Google brand name of your router default password. Uh, and you should be able to find it from there. But like I said, for this one's disabled, you just do the admin account and hit enter. But this is just for the demo anyway, so it's not really important. Uh, the next thing you want to do is go to your network settings. And you're going to want to find the MAC address for the device connected, which is the computer that you're using. Um, so it's the hardware address down here. Uh, it's going to be blacked out on my screen because I don't want you guys seeing my MAC address because that is permanently linked to the hardware. Uh, you can't actually change that, so I don't want you guys seeing the hardware address of my netbook. With the netbook here, we're going to have to actually do it the right way, which is manually write this IP address down. Um, this router actually does have a um, an auto import option when we get to that point, so it's not really a big deal here. Uh, but you are going to want to remember that. So write this down. Uh, the next thing you're going to do is set up your wireless on the router. 
So um, a lot of these things have wizards on them. Don't bother with that. We're going to do a manual wireless setup. I'm just going to name this one for my PSP is what it's going to broadcast as the name. And we're going to do a mixed mode of N, G, and B. And the PSP should have no problem connecting to one of those three channels. I'm wanting to say it's N, but it could be G. Uh, it's been a long time since I've done this. So uh, The next thing you want to do is set up WEP as your security mode. It's I know the PSP will connect to it. It's not secure at all. WP has been cracked, so we're going to take precautions with that shortly. Um, so after you set up your WEP code, set up a password for it. I've already done that. Uh, I'm not going to do it again because you guys don't need to know my network password. Uh, and then save your settings. It'll ask you to reboot, reboot your router, and when it comes back up, uh, you should be able to see that router from the PSP. So once you've uh, once the router's rebooted, you'll be back on your login page, log back into the router. And then we're going to go in on the PSP and go scan. And we're going to find that network that we just made for my PSP. For my PSP, WEP encryption, and then punch in your WEP code that you just set up. Hit next. Easy setup. Save the connection for my PSP. And then we're just going to do a um, continue, save the settings. Um, also, your buttons on your PSP, if you're in the U.S., will be different. Uh, this is actually a um, Japanese mapped keys because I'm a nerd and it made sense that way. So uh, your keys will actually be backwards. So we're not going to test the connection because it will fail because we don't actually have PSN connection because we don't have actual internet. So what you're going to do is you're going to actually want to find out what the what is the PSP's MAC address, which we just looked up on the laptop. Uh, but the problem is the PSP only connects when it's an, a needed connection. It's an ad hoc connection. So you have to have it actually requesting data to reveal the to connect to the internet. So we're going to go to date time settings, date and time set via internet. And what this is going to do is it's going to let you connect to that connection, and it'll get an IP address for that and start looking for the um, looking for the date time, which it's not going to find because we don't actually have internet yet. We're going to go back to network settings, and you'll see a second IP address that's different from the first and a second MAC address also. Um, so that's going to be the MAC address we have for the PSP. So you're going to want to write that down as well. So once you've gotten both those MAC addresses written down, we're going to go to the Advanced Setting tab. Uh, and pretty much every, uh, every router I've ever seen will have this. So on this one, it's called Network Filter. Uh, and basically what it's going to do is we're going to punch in those MAC addresses here for the desktop that we're on now and for the PSP. Uh, what that's going to do is um, it's going to block any device that tries to access this that doesn't have one of those two MAC addresses, which is hardware locked to these individual network cards. So uh, even if I were to connect to this router with my wireless card on this laptop, it wouldn't work because it's to that network card that's wired. Uh, so it's actually really super cool, really secure, uh, even though the encryption we're using on the password is not that secure. Uh, so that's how we're actually getting around that. So the next thing you want to do is turn on MAC address filtering. Uh, this one has multiple options, which we're going to do turn on and allow listed to the network. Um, and what we're going to do is basically this one has an option to let you pick connected devices already and just add those with a click of the button. Um, but some of them may not have that, so you'd actually, actually key in the MAC address that you wrote down earlier. Uh, but there's no big deal there. So we're going to hit save. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how this works. So we're going to take off the PSP's MAC address and save. So now what it's going to do if we try to connect is it's going to find the access point and basically it's just not going to find the access point because it's, uh, basically what's happening here is the PSP is requesting an IP address. The router is saying, hey, I see you. You got the right password, but you're not on my approved list. You can't have an IP address. And now we got to see an error occurred, uh, and it's not going to let it on. So now we're going to paste that MAC address back in, save it, and then go back in. And we're connected. And now it's going to fail because I'm not connected to the internet, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, so that's the basic setup, but. We're going to take it one step further and make it even more secure because um, I know if you're like me and you live in an apartment or a, 
a neighborhood with a lot of people around, you're going to have um, a lot of local broadcasts on Wi-Fi. Uh, I mean, I've got two in this apartment alone, uh, one for my 5 gigahertz and one for my 2.4 gigahertz networks. So um, if you have neighbors, you, they're all going to have their own wireless adapters and blah, 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 blah. So what we're going to do is take this one step further, go back to our wireless settings, uh, and we're going to go down to, uh, some routers will call it different things. On this router, it's called visibility status. Um, but what it's actually doing is broadcast SSID. Uh, so on some routers, on a good router, it should say broadcast SSID, yes or no. We're going to switch that to no. So the actual network itself is invisible. So basically, to connect to this network, you have to know this network name, know the password, which is encrypted, uh, and have your MAC address listed on this list of approved MAC addresses. So it's as secure as it can be without being better encryption. So we don't have to worry about people hacking my network or anything like that. All right, so now when we try to connect, it obtains the IP address even though the network itself is invisible. And I will show you that as well. But the nice part about it is, if you scan for the network, it's not gonna show up, because it's not broadcasting that SSID. So basically, the network exists, but it's not broadcasting itself saying, hey, I'm here, connect to me. So basically, once you've got all this set up, what you're gonna wanna do is take your old router, move this cable from your wired connection there, plug it into, this is hard to do backwards, plug it into the WAN port there, or it may be called internet port or some such like that. Uh, and so the other end of the cable, unplug your computer obviously, uh, and plug it into one of the number ports on your other router. Uh, so the main router that's coming into your house that is broadcasting your normal wireless to everybody, uh, plug this in one of those number ports. Uh, and what that's gonna do is your normal router will assign this router an IP address, uh, so this router will basically be seen as a device on that network and then it will broadcast its own network that then connects to your normal network. Uh, I know that sounds complicated, but it's really just you plug it in and it works. So uh, what I'm going to do personally is stick this in the Squish's room because she has a, um, my other old router, which is running DD DDWRT, which is a custom firmware for routers that is far, far superior to anything that's on the market, uh, in the consumer market. Um, but basically... Her router is set up to, um, it connects to my normal Wi-Fi and then takes that connection and spreads it out to its local ports. Uh, so what I'm going to do is plug this into one of its local ports uh, and then it's going to be my PSP connection from there. So nothing big, but she's just going to have two routers in her room. So let's hope she doesn't mess it up. But this was free when I got it and I got it well over five to six years ago. Um, and the one that's in there now is free and I got it three or four years ago. So uh, they're not, it's not a deal if she breaks them. Anyway, that's gonna wrap it up for now. I hope you enjoyed um, showing you how to connect your PSP to an old wireless card, old wireless network. Uh, and again, uh, the whole reason for this is newer routers, you can't connect to it with the PSP and it sucks. So uh, any of you PSP lovers out there, uh, I'm a huge fan of this thing. Uh, if you wanna see more videos on it, uh, I can show you some more software tricks with it. Um, because mine is soft mod, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with the soft mods and that kind of thing. But anyway, that's gonna do it for now. Hit that like button, get subscribed if you're not already. Um, check out some other videos, I'll put a card to something cool in the corner here, and you guys can check that out. Um, and I'll see you in the next one.